Right, so last night I finally managed to see The Amazing Spider-Man. I've been waiting a really, really long time for this film. Um, as you know, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. Over the last couple of days I've been doing a few videos related around Spider-Man. I'm a big fan of the Sam Raimi trilogy. And so, obviously, I was looking forward to this film, even though it was a complete uh, reboot of the franchise. But what I will say now is I'm not really going to compare the two. I don't want to compare Sam Raimi's vision of Spider-Man to Mark Webb's because after seeing the film last night, they're so, so different. They contrast each other so much. They're just like chalk and cheese. They're just too different. Um, naturally, obviously, you're going to compare scenes that happen in The Amazing Spider-Man to ones that happened in the original Spider-Man film because it's just natural. You're going to compare them and kind of decide which one you prefer that which route they went with it but I'm not going to come across a film that I think is the best because like I said they're too different but yeah I'm just going to fully focus on The Amazing Spider-Man I've got a few notes written down um, so yeah let's get straight on with the review um, so just a brief overview then I'm not going to delve into any spoilers or anything like that um, Peter Parker the nerdy school kid who I don't know why I'm going over the story, you've heard it a thousand times. Obviously, nerdy school kid, he's into science, gets bitten by the uh, radioactive spider and develops these spider skills. And we've seen it countless times in de many different ways. Um, but the, the good thing about The Amazing Spider-Man is it's very modern. It's like a modern version of this story. Everyone, you, you know what's going to happen. You're sat in the cinema, you're waiting for things to happen. Um, but that, it, as you knew things were going to happen, you weren't getting bored because it still manages to kind of suck you in. Um, and one main reason of that is Andrew Garfield. He does a really, really amazing performance as Peter Parker. He pulls it off perfectly. I can't think of anyone else that would kind of do the role better than him because he's he's quite young. Um, he acts really, as Peter Parker, he acts really good and quite shy and kind of awkward which he, he's supposed to be, he's really supposed to be quite awkward and quiet and he pulls it off great, he just keeps himself to himself in his classroom he's just laying low, things like that and when he talks to uh, Gwen Stacy, Emma Stone he, he gets all awkward and starts like uh, mumbling words and things like that so that's really great, he pulled off the Peter Parker style perfectly um, and as for his role as Spider-Man, he does that perfectly as well because obviously Spider-Man is a complete contrast of Peter Parker. He doesn't have the the nervous talking um, and things like that. So once he pulls that mask on and he isn't show his face isn't shown, he gets that confidence and things like that. And that's what Spider-Man needs. You need this Spider-Man needs to be that sort of cheeky trash talking superhero, and he pulls that off great in the film. Um, so that's why I think Andrew Garfield was a perfect, perfect Spider-Man slash Peter Parker for this film. Also you had uh, Reese Ifans playing uh, Lizard and, well, Dr. Connors, and I thought he was brilliant as well. Um, he pulls off like the kind of crazy scientist really, really well. Like at the beginning of the film he's a really likeable character and obviously kind of an ally to Peter. and as he develops into the lizard his when you see him as like his human form he's supposed to be acting really crazy and kind of like quite manic and just dis disturbed really and he pulls it off really really well um i'm a, I'm a big fan of Reese fans i've followed his career for quite a while now he's he's a really really good actor um of course uh, other actors in there you have michael sheen as uncle ben and i thought he was a brilliant brilliant uncle ben what I really liked about this um, this film was the way they told the story that we know. Uh, this isn't really a spoiler because you know it happens anyway. You, Uncle Ben uh, gets shot and dies at the beginning of Spider-Man. Um, and I don't know why you'll be watching my review if you didn't know that already happened. But uh, yeah, Uncle Ben dies. But before that, you get the really big build-up to that. It doesn't just happen straight off in the first 10 minutes of the film. Um, you really kind of set, settle yourself in there and get used to the characters. You get to familiarise yourself with the characters of Aunt May and Uncle Ben and uh, Peter Parker. You get a sense of their relationship and how close they are as a family because obviously Peter Parker's parents 
we don't know what's happened to them. You get a, a brief kind of flashback in the first scene of the film, um, which kind of leads the way of what's going to happen in the course of the film and over the future sequels as well. But uh, as you know, Peter Parker stays with Uncle Ben and Aunt May, and the uh, before he gets shot, we, there was a good lengthy part of the film was this kind of their struggle of living and things like that, and how they are as a family. And you see that they're, they're, it really does seem like they're a close little family, and that's what's really good. And that's why uh, when Uncle Ben eventually does get shot, um, that's why it's such an impact, and it really impacted me. Um, like in a way that I didn't think, because obviously I knew it was going to happen, I didn't think that it was going to be as sad as as how it was, and it really was a sad scene, it's quite emotional that one. Um, again, staying on that scene, I think they did that scene really, really perfectly, I think. Um, obviously you had like the Peter Parker, in, in this version he was in a shop before and he comes across the attacker, and obviously he had his chance to stop him, and then the, he goes on to kill Uncle Ben. but. Um, Obviously that, that happens in the previous Spider-Man film and in the comics and everything and it's all kind of done in a different way each time and this was this was a perfect way to do it I think and the actors were brilliant, Andrew Garfield was brilliant in the scene and it, like I said it was really emotional. Um, but moving on to that, moving off from that sorry and more into the technical side of the film, I thought the setting of New York was brilliant. Um, we didn't... It, we didn't focus on the main parts of New York, which was a good point. That there wasn't Times Square. You didn't see the Statue of Liberty. You didn't see, see the Empire State Building and Central Park. They, they didn't focus around that. They focused on like the the living half of like the living side of New York, where people actually have their lives and things like that, like Queens and things like that. Because that's what Spider-Man is supposed to be, really. Peter Parker and where he lives, he isn't supposed to be living in the city and things like that at the moment as he's becoming Spider-Man because he's obviously not the wealthiest family and things like that um, they live away from that side and I'm really glad that they kept that they kept that quite low, they didn't just influx us with New York and the stereotypical images of New York that we see, I'm really glad that they didn't do that and it really pulled it off well you saw a different side of New York and I thought that was brilliant um, there, what else have I got written down there? I thought the CGI in the film was brilliant. Uh, the lizard himself, um, he was put, he pulled off, was pulled off brilliantly. I know there's a few people saying that it wasn't the best. Um, like maybe that was what kind of one of the down points of the film, the actual lizard himself. But I thought it was really good. But some people saying he doesn't look as good as he could have. But I, um, I was happy with it. I thought he looked quite good. He was scary enough. He was big enough. Um, uh, perhaps I thought maybe perhaps he shouldn't have spoke because it when he spoke it kind of just put a downer on it. It was like oh you're not as scary as you should be when you speak. I know obviously the giant lizard speaking speaking and that's scary enough. But um, it just kind of thought when he started speaking I was kind of like oh maybe he shouldn't have spoken. It would kind of been a bit more scary or things like that. But uh, I, overall that was just a minor niggle. But I thought that I thought it pulled off brilliantly. Like I said, the acting of Reese fans was brilliant. Um, in relation to the comics, I think it was the perfect Spider-Man. I think the way that they handled everything was great. Like the suit looks really brilliant. Um, it's a lo it's a lot different than from the other uh, Spider-Mans we've seen in maybe cartoons and the previous films, things like that. It was a very different suit this one. And also, Spider-Man had his traditional uh, homemade web shooters in his wrists, as, a, as opposed from the coming out of his wrists, like genetically. And I thought that was really great. It, again, it adds to the the nerdiness of Peter Parker that he invents his own things, and that was really good. Um, what else have I written down? Uh, if you if you see the film as well, definitely stick around in the credits because there's a there's a scene there, and I will warn now, maybe potential spoiler spoiler area here, so if you haven't seen it, maybe uh, click off now or something. But yeah, um, there's a scene at the end of the credits, well, halfway through the credits, where Dr. Connors is sat in his cell in the, in the asylum, um, and he's, someone is inside the cell with him and speaking to him, and 
asking him whether he's told Peter about his um this guy's asking Dr. Connors if he's told Peter about his father and he's kind of hidden in the shadows throughout the whole scene and then Dr. Connors gets quite angry and he's shouting to leave Peter alone and things like that um and then you get an instant flash and there's like a figure in the corner and there's a lot of speculation going around on the internet who it is there's people saying that it could be Electro uh, who else was there? Mysterio um, maybe it was uh, maybe Norman Osborn obviously Green Goblin so we don't know there's, there's just speculation so far but there is definitely two other sequels planned which I'm really excited about I think that Marvel are kind of going down the Avengers route where the Spider-Man films are going to be the sole focus and maybe I think that my the rumours are that they're going to do a Venom film and I think if they do a Venom film it will kind of lead into maybe The Amazing Spider-Man 2 or 3 and that'll be really good um, so yeah overall brilliant film and one you should definitely check out um, if you love Spider-Man maybe in the comics, the previous films, the games, anything like that it's definitely definitely worth a watch and it's it's completely loyal to the comics so overall I'm going to give it I'm going to give it five stars because I just thought it was perfect um, just a brilliant film so definitely check that one out uh, thanks for watching this video that's all I've got to say really so uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video